Hey, this is Jim with Imperial Tools. Thought that I would uh, do a couple of uh, minutes of the updates that we did to the iManifold app that will be released this weekend. So I got uh, the iManifold hooked up to my air conditioner here at the house. Getting ready to uh, turn things on. I wanted to show you a couple of cool things that we did. Starting with, first of all, just simply the connection speed. Let me focus that in there for you. So right now I have the iManifold turned on. And I will show you, we did a little bit of work on making it connect faster. So now when we hit connect to the iManifold, it is connected, and you'll see it right here in just a second. There we go. So the connection speed has improved a little bit over the last. So now we've, we've added a couple cool new features. One is trending, and we'll slide this over here. And you can see you can turn trending on or off. Let me focus that in again there. I'm going to turn trending on. Oops. Turn it on. And you can see now it comes up to set up the trends. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select what we want to trend. So we've got uh, several different things we can pick from. I'm going to go ahead and we'll start off with low pressure and high pressure just to trend those two. And down here at the bottom here we can select the, the trending rate and the number of points and whether or not we want to show it on the main screen. So I'm going to show it on the main screen and then I'm going to hit submit. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to start the trending process. And you can see our both graphs are going, our higher and our low pressure graph. I'll focus in on the top one just for a minute so you can see that. And if we go back to iManifold, now what it'll do is it'll show the iManifold and show the, uh, the trending on the bottom of the display. Okay, so now the system started up. So we got our gauges going here. We're started. And uh, we're coming down in, uh, in, in pressure on the high side and up on the low, excuse me, down on the low side and up on the high side. And we'll let things just stabilize out for just a minute so you can see what's going on here. Now, this particular graph I have set up to show 30 points of data. And after that 30 points of data is gone, what's going to happen is, is we're going to um, start wiping those points off the screen. This is what a trend is. So a trend just shows you the current trend. So it's right now it's set up to, to trend every two seconds and uh, 30 points and you'll start seeing those wipe off the screen and as they wipe off the screen the trends will auto rescale to fit into there a little bit better. So you can see some of those low ones dropping off and the, uh, the high and the low side are starting to rescale right there. Alright, so now that the system settled out, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to profile the system and what we can do also with trending. So up here I'm going to hit profile, swipe it over, equipment profiling, profile a new system, and um, we're going to go ahead and get this set up as air conditioning, standard TXV, it is a ultra high efficiency standard evaporator, and our target subcooling here I believe is 17. And we'll go ahead and leave our, our current one at 10. And I'm going to hit submit. Now, all that we're going to get is we're going to get an outdoor uh, target right now. We don't have an indoor target because I haven't put in anything as far as uh, return air wet bulb, dry bulb conditions. And I got a target superheat, a target subcooling, and I got a target high pressure. Target type high pressure is driven off the outdoor air temperature. So as that changes, that'll change. And you can see what happened here is when I put in the targets, now I have this band, and this is plus or minus three degrees of saturation. So as long as I'm inside the band, my, uh, my, my high pressure is, is right on the money. Now it's a little bit high on this band, and if we look here, the most likely cause is, um, you know, I have some, some dirt on my condenser. It's not filthy here, but it's definitely not spotless by any means. It's been, you know, running, it ran all last summer, and uh, I haven't cleaned it yet. But it's better than it's looked in the past. Now, if we wanted to change anything on the trends, we go down here to options. And what I'm going to look at now, I'm going to take off high and low pressure. So I'm going to shut those two off. We'll go to superheat and subcooling and hit submit on the bottom. We'll take a look at how our superheat and subcooling look. Now you can see superheat and subcooling are dead on in the center of my targets exactly where they should be. Because I'm at 10.1 and 16.2. On subcooling, the allowable is plus or minus three and that's why it's a narrower band than the superheat which is plus or minus five and those are those are right where they should be now again this is 30 points of data and it's doing it every two seconds I can go in and change those options again and I can make this 
oh, 90 points of data and hit submit. So let's look at that for just a second. That It puts up the last 90 points of data that it recorded and it holds those in memory. So it actually is recording 90 points all the time. It just depends on what we want to show. In this case, uh, 30 points will do the trick. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that again. Take it back from 90 to 30 and go ahead and hit submit. And boom, there it is on the graph. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some other uh, stuff measured, put it on the I-manifold, and uh, we'll take a look at our, our final results. So next time we do this, I, I hope to be showing you guys some wireless probes. Uh, right now, uh, it is what it is, and I'm using my, uh, my Fieldpiece SDP2 uh, to make some measurements here. It's, uh, it's a pretty good instrument for, uh, for uh, humidity measurements and temperature measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to let this thing stabilize out and I'm going to go ahead and put some information in the, uh, in the iManifold app. So you can see right now we're measuring uh, our, what looks like our dew point temperature, oh, wet bulb temperature. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some measurements now. The iManifold app, I'll go back over here to user inputs for just a minute. And sorry for the jerky camera, I'm just doing this by hand tonight. And uh, we're going to go ahead and close the profiling up. Not the easiest thing in the world sometimes to operate the camera and operate the app. I'm going to go to user inputs and I'm going to go into airflow across the evaporator. Now one thing you guys will notice here is that we have made a slider now for wet bulb or relative humidity. You can just touch that and you can enter wet bulb temperatures or you can enter relative humidity and it'll switch that back and forth. I prefer relative humidity because wet bulb is a calculation so it's always best to use, uh, to in my opinion, to use the relative humidity and dry bulb temperature because it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more precise. So we're gonna go ahead back here and uh, we're gonna get our information here. So I gotta hit parameter on the uh, on this and we'll hit it again here. Parameter. Okay, that is the dew point. One more time. That's enthalpy. One more time. And that is the return air dry bulb and supply air dry bulb temperature. I'll try and focus it in for you again there. So we are at 68 and 47.1. So come over to here. Return air dry bulb, 68. And supply air, 47.1. Return air relative humidity. Back to the gauge here with parameter. And relative humidity are 49.2 and 83.3. 49.2 and 83.3. And we'll go ahead and put in our airflow, which I'm going to go up, go ahead and get just a minute off our thermostat, but I think it's around 10. 79 and I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. We'll double check that. Okay, so now you can see suction pressure is running a snudge high for what we have here for return air because now what I've got here is uh, 69 degree return air dry bulb, 47 wet bulb, supplier dry bulb, and supplier wet bulb. All right, so let me go get an airflow off that thermostat upstairs and uh, we'll come back down and plug that in. All right, so I'm up here at the stat real quick. I just wanted to verify the airflow. And you can see my blower CFM is 1078. So uh, that's uh, correct. We'll go back down and we'll, we'll put everything into the app and we'll do some more testing. All right, so right now we're trending. Just a couple things to note. Okay, I've profiled the system. I've got it set up exactly the way we should have for the 16 to 18 SEER 410A system. You'll notice that the indicator shows my suction pressures right on target. My liquid pressure is right on target. My superheat's in the center. My subcooling's in the center. This is the way everything should be. I don't have a dis line, discharge line temperature clamp, so there's nothing showing right there right now. And my trending is working across the bottom exactly the way it would. Okay, exactly what we'd expect to see here. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, give you an idea of what the trending can do. I'm going to uh, throw the panel. We've got the, the air conditioning panel here on top of my condenser and 
Oh, I think the leaves don't like that in there. So now I can start to see our subcooling is changing there. Let's go over to our pressures and see how our pressures are trending because that'll probably be a little bit more dramatic. Low pressure, oops. You can only have two selected, so you got to shut two off and turn two on. We'll hit submit. There, what's happening is my high high pressure is shooting up like crazy. My low pressure is remaining constant. This is because the TXV, its job is to maintain constant superheat, and so it's well, the driving conditions are simply the low side load or the uh, the return air conditions. It doesn't get affected by the outdoor air temperature. And you can see when we block off the high side, even though this is climbing from, oh, we're up to 379 now, and our target going back to 281, you can see that it's not affecting the low side pressure. If we go to superheat real quick, and see how that's trending. And this is the cool thing with the trends, we can take a look at each side of the system. We'll hit submit here again. And we can see that my superheat did not get impacted at all. My subcooling got driven up because it's obviously uh, thinking that uh, the high side pressure is a lot higher than it is, and it's you know we're we're artificially uh, messing with the system. Now another neat thing here is I can go over here and just hit uh, close that profiling up and just view trends full screen. And now you can see I can view them full screen. I can turn the sideways and. Uh, Take advantage of the landscape mode of the display. With some pretty, some pretty cool stuff here. Go back to options again one more time. We'll take. Uh, let's look at. Uh, well, let's look at at uh, high and low pressure again, just for the fun of it. And we will hit submit. See that high pressure's there. It's way up. Go ahead and pull that panel off. set that back down again and you can see sorry about the jerkiness there you can see that that uh, is coming right back down now you can see there's no blue band also and there's no blue band because it has not come into range yet they're not we're coming back into range get that leaf out of there we're gonna come right back in and start trending in where our pressure should be and once that gets out of the screen which is a few points away still we'll let it run for a minute it's going to go right back in, auto rescale the graph, showing you that it's back into range. Now what this is cool is you can take a screenshot before and after, and you would see, first of all, when I started, it was outside of the target, and after I fixed the problem, the pressures dropped back down and went inside the range, and I could just do another screenshot of this again with the, uh, uh, you know, with the camera feature of the app and it'll fall right in a range. So we're just about to the end of the target here. We got, uh, looks like four or five points and it'll start to rescale that graph automatically. And these are these are time stamped and uh, you know, all set up so you can see it's rescaling, making that bar a little bit bigger. And each time it'll go back into place. So what it's doing is just making it a little easier to view. And now this will rescale as it's coming back into play. And this is again based off plus or minus three degrees of saturation temperature. And you can see that everything's coming back into play and doing what it's supposed to do. We'll check out the superheat and subcooling. Those are right in line now with what they should be. And that's a little bit of what trending does. And I uh, hope you got out of, a little bit out of this, but. Uh, one of the coolest features I think we have on the iManifold to date, and I think you'll get a lot out of it and uh, really enjoy this feature because for me, it it's it not only gives you a chance to um, to see if things are stable, see if they're doing what they're supposed to do, but it's also very much uh, a great teaching tool. And I don't care how many years you have in the industry, I've got a lot of years in, and just looking at the relationships and watching what happens has helped me understand better what uh, what my air conditioning system is really doing. So this is Jim Bergman for Imperial Tools. Um, thanks a lot for watching.